this video we're going to show you how to reassemble the, um, the version 2 gearbox inside of a uh, JG F6613 from the very beginning. Hey guys, welcome back. In this segment we're going to cover how to reassemble a gearbox from the very, very bare bones of what it is. As you can see here, we have the entire gearbox uh, torn down to basically just the shell and the uh, electrical trigger unit. And that's pretty much what we're going to start from. We're starting from the very, very, very beginning of where this gun is assembled. So be mindful of what tools you need to do this. Um, have a standard size Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, by standard, it could be any size. You know, I don't have an exact measurement. I think this is a 00, zero um, size Phillips head. A PH00 zero zero if you're using a precision screwdriver set. Um, and since I said precision screwdriver, uh, have a precision screwdriver handy to where you could use um, a Torx head. This is actually a T9. This is actually a T8 that kind of stripped out that I ground out and made to a T9. And uh, picks come in handy. Here I have one of my ghetto picks. This one is uh, kind of made out of an airsoft part, but it does the job. Um, a Phillips head, or no, a flathead screwdriver ought to do the job. A precision Phillips head screwdriver will do the job. This comes in handy mostly for prying and uh, setting parts. And um, a precision Phillips head screwdriver. This is actually a P0, PH0. Uh, this comes with this is actually a cheap one that comes with most um, low power electric guns and most um, the Chinese clone airsoft guns. This, th these come in handy. You can't have too many of these. So if you probably have a bucket full of these like we do, I suggest you utilize them. Okay. Okay. Now we've covered all the tools. Let's. Uh, Let's get right to getting this thing together. Okay, first thing you want to do is um, you want to make sure that you have the electrical unit or the trigger unit in place, just for the sake of uh, convenience. We're going to call this the trigger group. This is a front wire trigger group. This goes to a um, most of the um, carbine style um, M4s, M16s. Um, basically, this this one this particular gearbox is from an F6613, so it's a front wire gearbox. Um, <clears throat> So what you want to do first, you want to make sure that the uh, trigger bridge is secured in place on the uh, the trigger contact group. This is easily done by just um, sliding this portion in to the trigger group, and it's just as simple as that. You know you got it right because it'll. There's only one way that it goes in, so that should be pretty self-explanatory. Once you secure the trigger group, uh, next thing you want to do is you want to set it inside the gearbox. So. Um, there's only one way to do this, again, but uh, just be mindful of a few things that uh, can cause problems when installing this. Um, there's two things you want to align it with. You'll notice on the trigger group here, there's a tiny hole on the top right here. Yeah. There's a round peg that's supposed to fit inside that, inside of the gearbox, the gearbox contours to it, which I'll show you in a moment. Okay. Here's the gearbox. You just get it centered. Okay, cool. You want to make sure that this part, right here, this little round peg, fits over that round peg right there. It's a small, tiny round peg. And uh, this beveled part right here, of the trigger group right here, um, so I can get a quick shot of it, right there. Yeah, you want to make sure that seats underneath this um, this cradling right here. This, uh, this cradling right here actually has a lip under it. Uh, this is actually where the trigger seats, the actual uh, physical trigger that you touch, which would be this. This seats on that hole right there, but I'm not going to put that on yet because we don't have the trigger assembly uh, assembled yet. Uh, be mindful on some models, when you go to put the trigger in, uh, when you go to put the actual trigger in, um, this really varies depending on the quality control done at the time. Uh, it may it may sit in there and not move around and sit there perfectly with friction and uh, pressure applied to it. You won't have to. You just have to set it in place, and it won't go anywhere. But we'll get to that in a minute, and I'll show you. Okay. So, take the trigger uh, unit. Make sure that, that beveled part sits underneath the trigger cradling. Okay. You want to make sure that that sits under there. And once you get it right, this hole right here on the top should line up with that peg, and it should sit flush. There we go. It sits flush. Okay. If you forgot to put this in, I suggest you put this in now, the uh, trigger bridge, so it touches the trigger contact. So you want to make sure it just sits in there. There you go. And it's not going anywhere. Okay. Uh, quick rundown of uh, troubleshooting. If your gun abruptly stops firing, it's 90%, 90% of the cause is mostly due to this. Uh, sometimes from the factory, 
the trigger contacts right here, the trigger, actual trigger, um, well, this is the positive wire. The, these, are, these are soldered to the trigger contacts. This opens and closes the circuit, essentially. So, um, these solder joints can break um, from heat or just firing off a lot of... Um, this is not necessarily the fault of the um, manufacturer. Um, when it heats up, sometimes the flux can start coming out of the solder. And the flux is basically what holds it together. So it's what keeps it stable and malleable to where it can actually handle the current of an electric yeah. Anyways, um, <clears throat> that could be one of the issues. The other issue is, is uh, much like a spark plug on a car, these contacts right here, these little uh, gold, uh, gold-plated contacts, well, these are copper, but some of them are gold-plated, but um, these can spread out too far from arcing in too much heat. Um, arcing is just a... Uh, it's just a bypro. It's just a, you know, it's a byproduct of what happens when this gun's being used, and arcing subsequently can cause um, can cause the cause the contacts to come apart since they are getting hot and since they're being moved, it's going to cause them to come apart. These need probably need to be bent back. So there's no specific gap. It's just just as long as the trigger contact or as long as the bridge can push into it and it kind of expands like that, like this right here, then you know it's then you know it's good and you know it's not going to cause any problems with. Uh, Trying to get a no, trying to get a, the circuit complete. Okay. The other issue is, is uh, this is something that may require a little bit of ingenuity and some advanced, um, some advanced technology. Okay. This right here, if you notice, there's a square peg sitting behind this trigger contact or the trigger contact unit. This is meant to stop the um, the actual bridge from uh, going all the way back and going over the trigger, over the top of the trigger uh, sear, which sits up here. So. That can cause an issue. That can snap off uh, without warning, and usually it's puzzling to people because it's such a small, insignificant part to those. You know, most people overlook it. Um, a way to fix this, unfortunately, it requires you to pull the gearbox apart like this, and you need to drill. Um, you can take a one sixteenth drill bit and uh, drill it through, and then put a screw in there on the other side. But make sure it's a screw that's able to uh, clear the selector plate because when the selector plate's in place right here. Uh, it's got to be able to slide over it, and if that drags, if that drags on top of it, it's just going to cause problems with the selector plate. It's one way to. That's one thing to look out for if your gun just abruptly stops firing. Uh, another one of the major issues, of course, could be the fuse and the uh, trigger contact, or these actual. Uh, sorry, I have a thing for saying trigger contacts. Um, <clears throat> uh, the motor contact uh, connectors right here. Sometimes these can arc. These these again are subject to uh, what can happen if. Um, it's arcing too much, or if you're using too high of a voltage of battery, this will cause these to expand from heat, because the motor is the hottest part of the gun. It usually does get the hottest, uh, seeing as how it's, gen you know, it's generating the, the power to that's spinning the gears. So, okay. All right, once you have this in place, once everything's secure, once it si sits flush, the next thing you want to do is you want to make sure it's screwed down. If you gotta, you got to make sure this is screwed down, because if it isn't, it's just going to kind of bounce around inside the gearbox and cause... Uh, it's going to cause issues, like the trigger uh, the trigger contact isn't going to seat straight, and the trigger's probably not be able to gauge it properly, and it's just going to cause problems. So, okay. Once you've opened your gearbox, you should have a total of around um, 12 screws. There's two. There's three small ones, three coarse thread uh, broadhead ones, like this right here, like this particular one right here. There's three of these. Um, one of them is used for the safety, the physical safety unit. One of them is used for the... Um, the semi-auto um, stop latch, which would be this cool little article right here, and the and the other one is just used to secure this in place. So you want to take one of those screws and you want to screw it into this uh, screw it into this hole right here. There's a little uh, okay. I can just keep it in the center. Okay. Yeah, there's a little screw hole right here. You should be able to see it. And then you just want to take the screw. And put it in. Just you should know how to screw and screw. Clockwise to tighten it. Counterclockwise to loosen it. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. As I've said many times in videos, and I'm really tired of saying it. <laughs> okay, so all right. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that the wiring is channeled through here properly. Uh, you want to make sure the black wire goes underneath the red wire. So make sure it sits inside this channel because you can see there's a whole intricate channel that runs right here all the way down to here and all the way over here. This channeling right here in particular is for uh, this is for rear wiring. This is this isn't used on this particular one, but 
it's an option in the future if you feel if you feel apt to working on the working on this gearbox after you've watched this video or if you just have experience and you're brushing up, you know. I'm not gonna tell you guys what to do with this video. It's uh to your discretion and basically that's how it goes. Alright, so what you do, let's make sure that sits in place. You can use your tip of your screwdriver to push it down in there. You wanna make sure it's perfectly you wanna get it as flush as you possibly can. And be mindful of making sure that the uh, wiring does not sit over this little corner right here. And make sure that it's sitting um, with very little play. Because if it isn't, the, um, when you go to put the trigger down, they can actually um, put a pinch on the wire. And just, okay. Above, above all else, make sure when you put this together, it sits flush. And make sure that everything um, isn't pinching. Make sure the wires don't pinch because if you, uh, the wire starts pinching, it causes resistance and then starts causing performance issues in your gun. It's the equivalent of, uh, clamping a hose together like this, you know, kind of just bending it together. And that can cause issues and can cause major electrical problems. It can cause this unit to melt. It can cause the solder joints to come undone if that worst case scenario. So it also causes, you, you get the idea, it causes bad things. So, okay. Once you've run the black wire, um, inside the gearbox, when you took it apart, there should be this little shoe-looking part. It kind of reminds me of a shoe deal. Okay, it's this little part right here. Um, this sits right here on the, uh, what would be the rear, the rear wiring channel. And this just keeps that black wire from moving around, so you want to make sure that the arched part of it faces down, this little arched end right here. Just keep it in the shot. Yeah, want to make sure that faces down and towards the black wire right here. And there's also a, um, it's a deeper angle, as you can see right here, it's kind of a deeper side right here. You want to make sure that faces down towards the gearbox, like so. It should just seat like that. And that just means the black wire's not going anywhere, and it's out of sight, out of mind. Well, it's in plain view, but you get the idea. Alright, and uh, the red wiring, as I said before, make sure it clears this peg right here, or this little cradling right here. This is usually done just by seating it like this. And, okay, you want to make sure the channeling runs through here. Run it through the channel like you did with the black wire, but um, right around here, this is one of the screw holes where the uh, bottom portion of the gearbox, um, this is where the bottom part of the gearbox screws in. You want to make sure it seats over that. As you can see, most times from the factory, it's already pre-looped. It's already been shaped, so just seat it like that, and it's not going anywhere. Okay. Just over the course, it may try to pop out. Just make sure that it... It fits pretty good for most times, so you shouldn't have too much trouble after that. Okay. Once you've done that, okay, assuming you have a set of picks, uh, this is coming very handy. Um, here's my ghetto pick. Use your, uh, okay, there should be five springs included in this gun. There's a, um, a small coil spring, like so. This actually sits on the selector plate. This isn't used right now. Um... Here's a latch spring. This one in particular is used for the anti-reversal latch, which is a crucial part to your gear's health and also gives your gun snappier performance. It's a very crucial part to the gun's life and performance. Um, here we have a, a tensioner spring. Uh, this is a larger one. There's a, there's a little variant of it, which is this one right here. You can see right here. Keep the shot, yeah. This one right here is used for the tappet plate, which is... Uh, this part right here, which is not used yet. And this one is actually used for the trigger unit. This is the one that we need right now, so I'll set that right here. And this one is used for the uh, physical safety unit. This one's another uh, latch spring. This one's very, uh, this one's a lot bigger than the other one. It's got a bigger loop in the center of it. Uh, we'll show you how to install all these later, but for now we need that small tensioner spring. Okay, so. First thing you want to do when you put the tensioner spring on, okay, if you'll notice on the top of the trigger, of the, on the top of the trigger bridge right here, there's a small F-shaped um, like arm on here. Okay, if I can get it in the shot, you should be able to see it. It's got little ridges on it. It's literally shaped like an F. Okay, so what you want to do is uh, you want to make sure that one of these loops goes over it. Okay, there's a smaller loop and there's a larger loop. You want to make sure that the larger loop goes over the peg right here. There's a uh, there's a peg coming out of the gearbox, and as you can see, it's supposed to sit right there. Okay, so you want to take the smaller loop first and put it between the F. It should just seat there. It fits pretty good there. It fits there with pressure. So okay. you want to take your pick. You can just take this and slide it over. And as I said before, it's a good idea to have one of these. So 
Bear with me, guys. I'm kind of getting oriented here. It's kind of tricky to do. Okay. And it should just seat like that. And that looks good right there. Okay, and it should just spring back like that, and that's exactly what you want. Okay? You've got all that done. You've got the first part of this installing the electronics done. The next step that you're going to move on to is you're going to reattach a selector plate to the gun. The selector plate is a, um, it's crucial to your gun's, uh, well, the ability to go to safe semi-full, right? which goes without saying. So you want to take this portion of the gearbox and you want to flip it over. Okay. As you can see, this little deal fell out. If that does happen, just put it aside and we'll put it back in once it's flush. Okay. On this side, you should notice that there's a, um, there's two golden contacts right here. This is actually a crucial part of the safety feature on this gun. This right here is a physical connection that the um, selector plate sits on top. You notice the selector plate has this little copper plate on here. And basically when you engage this, when you engage the safety latch on this, it'll put a physical stop in front of the trigger and it'll cut off this electronically. So this is another issue that can cause your trigger not to fire or cause your, cause your gun not to fire and cause your trigger not to bridge properly. Um, these contacts can sometimes bend down from heat and arcing, so if it causes any problems in the future, um, check these. Make sure that they're sitting up and they're touching the selector plate properly. Some models of airsoft guns have this canceled out, and um, if that is, then it is. Like, the classic Army Sport lines have that canceled out, so... Okay, so what you want to do is you want to slide this over. It doesn't... Um, you have to slide it in from the large end to the front, like so. Just like this. Push it all the way back for now, and that's secure. So, flip over your gearbox. It should be good. If parts fall out, um, don't trip too much. Just um, put them back in the place. A good preventative measure to avoid mishaps in the future is to, I can't remember whether or not I said it in the video before, but I'll just say it again. Um, Make sure that the shims stay attached to the gears. The shims are these little, um, if you're not familiar with uh, the lingua with airsoft guns, these little metal washers like so. Uh, these are meant to remove play in between the gearbox to keep the gears spinning straight and um, not causing any damage to the gears. A common problem, at least with uh, a lot of clones, is that they're poorly shimmed. And they're just kind of, they shim it and they get it out of the factory. So you just want to keep that in mind. Okay, so a good way to prevent that is to make sure that they stay stuck to the gears, which, you know, is not here nor there, as they already are on the gears, so, okay. That's just one preventative measure you want to take, okay? You want to put your, if any parts fell out when you flipped it over, uh, reseat the parts. There is a way you can keep these bushings from falling out, but it takes a little bit of time, because you need to let, um, you can take some uh, thread locker and actually apply it a little bit to the outside, and they should seat in there. It's kind of a good measure to take because if these move around too much, they cause uh, they cause the gearbox to start um, wearing down prematurely out here, and it just turns into an issue. The gear starts spinning weird, and um, that's just something you may want to take care of if you want to, if you're that thorough. Okay. Once you've done that, what you want to do is you want to reinstall the safety lever. The safety lever requires three parts. There's this part right here, and then there's this part. This is the actual physical safety that touches the uh, gearbox, or the uh, that touches the trigger, rather. And you want to take one of those uh, latch springs, as I mentioned earlier. You want the large loop one, like this. Okay. Cool. Alright, take the, um, the L-shaped part, this one, and put it in this side of the gearbox. Okay, you want to make sure that on this side, and parts are going to fall out again. <laughs> okay. On this side, you want to make sure that it seats just like that. Okay? And you should be good after that. So keep your finger on it, flip it over. Alright, cool. Alright, reseat your parts. I would thread lock it right now, but I'm pretty sure you guys don't want to watch thread locker dry. Alright. Once you got that in place, the next step you want to move on to is you want to attach this spring. The proper way to seat the spring is make sure that this small, narrow point right here touches this side of the gearbox right here. So we want to make sure it sits like that. Okay. So with this, um, with the actual stop, with the actual stop lever, 
What you want to make sure is, uh, you want to make sure that the, um, uh, the concave part of it faces towards the trigger unit, this part. If you notice, it's a different angle where it's cut. You want to make sure this portion faces up, like so. Okay. It should seat like that if you did that correctly. Okay. Once you've done that, um, you could take the uh, other portion, you take this portion of the spring right here, and you have to loop it over. You kind of got to overlap it on top of this uh, on top of this portion of the gear or on top of this portion of the latch right here. Okay. If you did this right, it should just spring in a place like that. Okay. Cool. Looks good. Alrighty then. Um, remember, as I said before, you might want to use some of those tiny screws. Here's another one of the tiny screws. Um, it goes inside this little screw hole right here. So. That and screw it down. This may be a little tricky because it's a coarse thread screw and it's also uh, got very little surface area to grab onto. As opposed to this, where you had some count, where you had some, um, you had a the the trigger unit to guide it in. This one, it's just kind of flush. So tie it down, hand tight. Don't do it too tight because if you strip it, uh, the screw is going to sit straight and this is going to keep sliding off. And you don't want that. Okay. Everything looks good there. Okay, your safety latch is reinstalled. Basically, when the safety is engaged, the selector plate pushes all the way forward and keeps the trigger from moving, like so. And the part's gonna fall out again. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have to flip it over again, anyways. If you'll notice, uh, right here, there's a small uh, hole cut inside here. There's a small square hole cut in the top of this. This is where the semi-auto stop latch sits. So we'll install that next. So the semi-auto stop latch looks like this right here. Okay. So you want to make sure. Okay. The proper way it's supposed to seat is this is supposed to seat underneath the trigger bridge like so, and the small arm right here is supposed to go towards this hole. So you always want to make sure this sits like that. Okay. Uh, if you did it right, it should seat like that properly. Okay. And again, with those tiny screws, what you want to do is you want to put the tiny screw right there so it's secured in place. This is so it can rock back and forth and actually uh, cause a semi-auto effect to work. To work, its, uh, to work its deal. Can't really think of a better word, folks. Sorry. Okay. Make sure it screws in place like that. Looks good. Okay. Do that right. It should just move back and forth like that, and it shouldn't go anywhere. All right. Once you have the semi-auto uh, arm in place, what you want to do is you want to flip the gearbox over. Yeah, the part's going to fall out. Or not. Okay. That tiny coil spring I told you about earlier, you want to secure that in place. Um, this is done by... Um, there's, two, there's two nipples on the... Um, there's two nipples on the outside of these... Uh, on this arm... And there's one on the actual uh, selector, uh, the selector plate. I'll point them out to you. What I'm talking about? Okay. Uh, these are these are a preventative measure to keep the spring from popping out when it's being moved. That's pretty self-explanatory. Okay. Set that in place like that. Uh, you can use a flathead screwdriver, and I can't stress enough to you: be careful on this part. Make sure you know it's secured because if the spring falls off, it's a very small spring and a very hard spring to find. So. Turns into a real nuisance, so you can try to avoid it. Um, this is one way you could do it. If you prefer doing it the hard way, uh, if you want to do it the easy way, uh, push it against the selector plate first. So I'm gonna make sure that it seats like this. Okay. If you did it right, it should sit just like that, and it's not going anywhere after that. Okay. Let's flip the gearbox over. Replace all the parts that fell out. If you're, if you're smart, unlike me, um, the parts that keep falling out, you'll just leave out and then put back in later. But I like doing things the hard way. Okay. There we go. All right. And next step we're going to move on to is we're going to 
install the tappet plate and cylinder. Okay, the first thing you want to do when installing a tappet plate and cylinder is to locate the parts. So you know what the anatomy is. Here's the piston cylinder. This is the um, uh, this is the major. This is one of the uh, four major parts of the gun's compression. As you see, this is a ported one. This is actually meant to prevent um, a vacuum effect, which is pretty prevalent on um, older airsoft guns such as Marui and ICS because. Um, what would happen is, is it would suck the BB in and the FPS, or it would cause a backwards pressure and cause the FPS to drop erratically. So, this is a pretty prevalent issue, but isn't an issue anymore because a lot of companies got smart and started putting different parts in there. Okay, this one has a ported cylinder. This one also has a ported piston head. And here we have the uh, actual piston. As you can see, it's got 14 uh, plastic teeth. Uh, some of these may come with the, uh, uh, the, fr uh, the second tooth removed on the account of, um, this can sometimes, on most models, this will cause a premature engagement, thus causing damage to the, uh, the teeth and the rear portion of the uh, cylinder. Uh, in worst case scenario, this whole rear, this rear tooth can just snap off. And, uh, that's one thing to take into account when your gun isn't firing, but you can hear the gears move. Okay, so. Alrighty, now that you have that, now that you have all these parts, you want the, uh, cylinder head. This is another part of the compression system. So what you want to do is you want to secure the cylinder head into the cylinder. Um, you want to make sure the porting goes towards the rear because you want most, of, you want a majority of the compression to be right here. So just slide that in like so. It may be harder than others. It really doesn't, It I can't really tell you exactly what it's going to be like because every gun's different. So okay. The proper way to align it is to make sure that it's flush and it looks just like this. You want to make sure that it's seating just like that, because if it's too far back, it's not gonna it's not gonna seat in the gearbox properly. Okay. The next step is to take your tappet plate. The tappet plate is a crucial part of your gun's uh, feeding. This is the uh, portion. This is the portion of the gun that sits right here, and it sits over the sector gear, which we'll show you in a moment. And I'll show you how it works once we get the gears in, and basically causes the cylinder nozzle to feed uh, no, to feed the BBs into the uh, feed the BBs into the hop up. And then you want to take your cylinder nozzle, or your piston uh, nozzle, which is this little black thing. This goes right over the brass um, the brass tube on the end of the uh, cylinder head, like that. Okay, but before you do that, you want to make sure that this is seated in the tappet plate correctly. If you'll notice on the tappet plate, there's a small ridge cut into it. There's a small, like, ridge, uh, narrow, like, cradling right there. So and if you notice, there's little ridges cut on the outside of this uh, cylinder nozzle. So, it should just seat on top of that, and it shouldn't go anywhere. You should just be able to sit it like that if you do that correctly. Okay? Next thing you want to do is you want to slide this over the cylinder, like so. And it should look like that if you have it assembled correctly. Good. All right, now, you want to seat this inside the gearbox, like so. You notice there's two holes on both sides of the uh, cylinder head. And it should seat like that. Uh, one thing to be wary of is uh, be careful not to push down on it too hard right here. If you notice, there's a groove cut into the bottom of the tappet plate. This is where the spring is supposed to sit, uh, the spring for the trigger unit. This little um, this little arm right here is actually where the uh, uh, the tensioner spring for the um, for the tappet plate is supposed to sit. If you notice, there's a peg similar to the one on the trigger right here. Okay. A good way to prevent it from crushing the spring and causing damage to the spring is to push it in like this. And see, it's just like that. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's one of two ways you can go about this when reassembling it. You could put the gears in first. You could put the sector gear and spur gear in first, but um, that can cause a nuisance. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it the hard way, just so you get acquainted with how it works. So, okay. Once this is secured, what you want to do is you want to put the tensioner spring onto the arm and onto the peg. So, again, this is where my ghetto peg comes in handy. Okay, so what you want to do is make sure that it, both of the loops on this one as opposed to the trigger spring is, um, they're both of the same size. So it's not that, it's it's not really that sensitive. Okay. Another thing to take into account when you seat the cylinder is make sure that it sits in here flush. There's actually a cut right here where it's supposed to sit flush. It shouldn't be popping out like this. It should, it should be sitting straight. Okay. And you want to make sure this right here goes over the peg. Okay. And if you did it right, you should be able to do this with the tap of plate. Okay, cool. 
already. Uh, the next step, it's optional, but um, it's optional at this point. I mean, you could do this later if you wanted to, but um, I usually do it for the sake of continuity. So just slide the cylinder inside there. Make sure that these rails right here are adjacent with this rail. So if, if not, then it's going to not sit straight, and you're just going to have troubles getting the gearbox together. Okay? And it should sit just like that. Okay. Um, your next step... Again, if this um, if you have a trouble if you have trouble with this staying in place, then I recommend waiting last to do this. Here's your trigger unit or trigger rather. Okay. You want to attach this. You want to make sure that this touches the trigger unit properly. So, okay. What you want to do is you want to make sure the spring goes in first, like this. If you notice, there's a little um, arm on the other side of it. Okay. If you do this right, it should seat just like that, and it shouldn't go anywhere. And you should just be able to kind of pull on it right there. And it's seated properly. Okay. And we're coming to a close with how to reassemble this gearbox. And here comes the most meticulous part. Um, we're going to need to put the gears in and we're going to need to put the anti-reversal last spring in. Uh, this has been known to be a real headache among version 2. Um, people people are uh, really familiar with the version 2, but I'll show you some of the best ways to try and work with it. And we'll move on to that in just a moment. Okay, now we're reaching the final part of how to reassemble this gearbox. Okay. Bear in mind, this is where the whole situation gets really sticky. It's really kind of meticulous, and it's a really time-consuming matter, but you have to remember that the most important part about reassembling anything is that patience is a virtue and not a luxury. So what you need to move on to. Okay, first gear you want to install is your spur gear. This is uh, this is the most noticeable gear, and when people associate uh, gears with anything, this is what they think of. They think of the flat, round gear. Okay. You want to install that first, and that usually goes in the middle hole, which is right here. Okay, and it should sit like that. Okay, again, make sure that it's shimmed properly. If not, then it's going to cause problems in the future. It's nothing prevalent, but your gun's performance will suffer a little bit. And uh, you just want to make sure. Okay. okay, the next gear you want to install is your sector gear. This is the most notable one because it has a sectional uh, portion of the gear. It's half cut, and then on the other side, it's... Uh, on the other side, it's got a perfectly round gear. It's got holes cut in it because this is supposed to be the lightest. This is supposed to be the lightest gear on here. Okay. When putting in the sector gear, one thing you want to be mindful of is how to um, set the AOE, um, the area, the area of um, AOA rather, area of arrival. It's the um, okay. This peg right here, basically, this is what causes the feeding. This little peg right here is what causes the feeding measure uh, on the airsoft gun. When you have the sector gear installed properly, it should be seating just like this. And uh, next step is to install your bevel gear, which would be this gear right here. This is the uh, this is the first gear that touches the the pinion head on the motor, the pinion uh, gear rather on the motor, which would actually be this particular gear right here. This is the motor, and here's the pinion gear right here. This is the last part, and the sector gear is the final drive, and here's the. Uh, the rack gear, which is actually on the pi which is integrated into the piston. Okay. Next thing you want to do, the first thing you want to do is actually install the anti-reversal latch. As I said before, this is kind of meticulous, so bear with me. Okay. What you want to do is you want to make sure with this spring. Actually, let me get this zoom in on here because it's going to be really small and hard to explain. So, okay. You want to make sure that this. Essentially, this is how it's supposed to seat. This is how it's supposed to seat, and it's supposed to apply pressure to this portion of the sector gear. This basically right here acts as a ratchet and makes and keeps it from spinning backwards, which you don't want. To attach the spring, um, the flat part of the spring right here is supposed to seat against this gearbox or seat against the gearbox right here. So, okay, if you did it right, if you attach the spring right to the uh, latch, the anti-reversal latch, it should look something. If I could just get it on there. Okay, here we go. It should look something like this right here. Like that. 
and if you did it right, you should be able to do this with your finger on top of it. You should be able to move it, and it will just spin back. Okay. Then you want to seat your bevel gear in place, like so. Um, if you're going to adjust, if you're going to set where the sector gear catches on, I recommend you turn it um, counterclockwise, and it will seat properly. And as you can see, the anti-reversal latch is giving us a lot of problems. It's slipping out of place. It's kind of a bad design. Some companies have actually improved on this design. APS actually did a pretty neat little thing. They put a tiny spring under here, and it just kind of stays in place very well. And uh, then... Uh, modify a Taiwanese company that makes, uh, they're the only company that makes pre shimmed modular gears. They, uh, um, they put a little, a little e ring on here. Uh, that's something to consider if you're ever thinking about getting different gears. Alright. Now that everything's secured, um, there's one measure you can take to keep that, to keep that from moving around. You can take a screwdriver or another tool. Kind of just set it, as you see, I'm using my pick like this. And, you know, hopefully that's enough pressure to keep it in place. As you can see, it's doing better than what it would if I was just letting it hang there. Okay. The last step of reassembling this gearbox is to, you want to install the mainspring, which is the most crucial part of this gun. It's basically what causes the compression to happen. So, let's move right here. Okay. Take the, uh, take your spring this spring and slide it inside of the piston like so. Once you've got that done, you want to take your guide rod, which is this deal. Some of these may come with bearing heads on them. Some uh, the JG ones do not, at least not the uh, at least not their M4 ones. Okay. And you should seat it just like that. Okay. Uh, be mindful that this can pop out, so your best bet is to keep your finger on the piston at all times. Okay. Now, when reassembling the gearbox, there's many things that can go wrong. Uh, the spring can pop out. This can pop out of place. Uh, these gears can misalign over the bushings and um, these pegs. And this right here can actually get in the way, which I'll show you. I'll show you the proper step to make sure that it gets sealed up properly. Okay. Take this portion of the gearbox, and you want to slide it over. You want to just put it over. Okay. To keep the uh, piston from moving around, I recommend you do, use this hand motion like this and like that. Your finger on top of it, slide it over, make sure it seats, uh, make sure that the peg on this side of the gearbox seats into the piston cylinder head properly, make sure that sits in there, okay. Uh, the next step you want to take is you want to push in on this guide rod just a tiny bit, you can use your finger or you can use a screwdriver, like so, or sometimes it just may just fall into place like that, and as I said before, there's little tiny variations of problems that can go wrong right now, so... Once you have this in place, and if this is secured properly, if the anti-reversal latch is secured properly on this hole, um, I'm gonna zoom in and show you what I'm doing here. Okay. If you'll notice, one of the one of the gear shafts is misaligned. That would be the bevel gear. Uh, this is more than likely to happen because this is the only spring. This is the only one with a spring tension on it. Okay. To uh, get this aligned, what you can do is you can see you can see where part of the uh, bevel gear is right here. You can push on it right here. And it should just kind of fall into place like that. And uh, if you notice, the safety right here is kind of causing an obstruction. What you can do is just um, on this side of the gearbox right here, just slide it like that. And if that's not if that's not helping, it's probably because the trigger is misaligned. So what you want to do is kind of do this. And if it's not if it's still not seating right, it could be because the tap of plate is misaligned. And as you can see, you can just do that. Just kind of move all the parts around and get a feel for it. If you did it correctly, it should look something like this. And it should be, there should be no major, there shouldn't be a big crack in here. There shouldn't be any major creases in here. And that's pretty much, you're almost there to getting the gearbox back together completely. Okay, the final step is, is you need to put all nine screws back inside this gearbox. Rather, I think there's uh, either ten or nine, uh, ten or nine screws in here. And certain models, it's nine, and in certain models, it's ten. Um, on the top row right here, sometimes this is four, sometimes this is five. And on the bottom portion here, there's five of them always. Or sometimes um, there's a um, there's a screw missing from here. Uh, sometimes there won't be a screw all here. On some of the MP5s, Echo 1 MP5s, it won't be there. On some other kinds of guns, it won't be there. But, you know, just keep all your screws handy. Okay. 
Um, learn to differentiate what screws go where. On these indented parts, you want the... Um, what you want there is you want um, the round-headed screws. You can see here's the here are the round-headed screws right here, as opposed to these ones, which are the um, flat-headed screws. The flat-headed screws uh, fit in the countersunk parts right here, and here, and here. This is where the counter. This is where the flat-head screws go. The ones that have the, the flatter, broad head, and this ones with the round heads right here. So the round head ones go inside these holes right here, the ones with the indent cut into the um, into the gearbox. And then you want to take all the um, flathead screws and put them here, here, here. Okay. Just to clarify, these aren't flathead as in the screwdriver flathead like this. They're actually Torx. These are T9 or T8. Uh, I recommend you have both because sometimes these screws aren't the same size. Each time, sometimes they're uh, they're cut too shallow from the factory, and uh, T9 will help screw them in better. Okay. And on the top row, they're all round head screws. Um, you just put those in. On certain models, they're flat head, like the SEMA uh, the SEMA CM49 gearbox has a flat head. It's also a lot thicker here because it's a blowback gearbox. So yeah. Once you have all the screws secure, you should know this part. Um, a good measure. This is actually. Uh, a mechanics method too. It's um, you want to just light. You want to lightly hand tighten them like this, and you want to do them parallel to each other like that. Okay, just make sure it's like it's really loosely hand tight like that. This is just so you get an even uh, you get an even torque distribution to all the screws, and you don't have any problems with uh, you don't have any problems with any misalignments or anything like that. Lightly hand tighten them. You you don't have to do them. Um, you don't have to kind of hopscotch. You don't have to da, 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 like that if you don't want to. It's really not going to hurt it too much, but it's just it's just good practice and just it looks better in showmanship. It's kind of a guilty pleasure of mine. Okay, and your gearbox should essentially look like this when it's fully assembled. I really hope this long video, this extremely long video, has been very informative to you. Um, I hope that you utilize this, and I hope you practice uh, playing airsoft safely and stay, you know, stay safe, shoot straight. Thanks for shopping at HitGuns.com, and we look forward to making more videos like this to help you guys out in the future.